Hi, this is Stacia, um, and I wanted to um, show a game that I played on chess.com. Very interesting game, different um, type of game than I'm used to, and um, a lot to learn from it, I think. So um, let's have a look. Um, my opponent was Severus Sir Jer W. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. He was rated uh, 14, <clears throat> 1499. And I was rated 1528. Yeah, my chess.com rating is taking a hit lately um, due to games exactly like this. Like, I felt like my opponent played um, tricky and pretty well. Um, but, yeah, let's take a look. <laughs> so I guess I've sort of foreshadowed what happens. Um, all right, so I played my trusty Scandinavian. He takes here. I take with the queen. Knight c3, queen a5. And this is the first interesting moment of the game. Um, a normal continuation would be d4 or bishop c4. And my opponent played queen e2. And here, you know, psychology of chess matters because in my mind, I was like, mm, my opponent's 1400. I just turned 1700 USCF. He doesn't know what he's doing. You know, I'm, I'm going to have a good game here. But that was completely um, incorrect to be thinking that way. What I really should have been thinking is, what is my opponent's idea with this move? I knew this move was suspicious, but why is the question. And, um, well, the reason he played this is he's eyeing the b5 square. Notice that two pieces are protecting that square now. So... And it's a check. So um, so he's threatening queen b5 check, basically. And I completely missed this. I just thought I'll develop normally and I'll be better. That's what I thought. So I played this. And this is not a bad move. This is actually playable. But I think um, even though the computer says position's equal, I don't think I would go into this willingly um, precisely due to the game continuation. So... All right, he plays this, queen b5 check. Um, now, I guess I could play knight c6, but I took the queen. And so, okay, here's his first idea. And, um, yeah, this game, um, it's like, as you'll see, the next few moves is just relentless pressure on my position and um, very difficult to um, get out of it. All right, so he has a pretty clear threat here. I felt like I have, I mean, the computer says I have more options, but I felt like my main options here were queen d8, or <laughs> queen d8, yeah. Bring my queen back on the board and play d8. I thought that was good. King d8 and knight a6. And these are typical ideas, right? Computer also gives knight d5, interesting. I didn't really consider knight d5 because, um, after this move, I would be very concerned. But it says we can play a6 here. Very interesting. And you could play this type of position. Though I have to say, um, now I'm a pawn down with check. And this looks pretty uncomfortable. I mean, you can play this way. But again, um, well, I'm learning is I'm learning that I don't always trust computer evaluations because... The computer will play uncomfortable positions and play it really well. And I'll just have a position where I'm more likely to screw up. So, <laughs> so I wouldn't go into this line. But knight d5 is playable. So interesting. All right. So I went with king d8. And in hindsight, I would play knight a6. I think this is better. Um, but king d8, um, it doesn't look so bad. The problem with king d8 because I just undefended this pawn, which I didn't notice, but my opponent did. <laughs> so he goes knight f3. Yeah, and now he's threatening knight g5, knight e5. And this is not easy to um, defend. I thought, okay, well, I'll play a tempo move. c6 is desirable. But guess what? He um, he jumped in anyways. So I miss, the, I miss the fact that his tempo move is stronger than my tempo move. These are the types of moves that 
I really need to get better at. I think I think this game highlights um, my weakness as a player right now. Um, these types of ideas I often miss, forcing ideas like this. Okay, um, so yeah, what to do? I mean, bishop e6, right? Computer gives rook g8. I can't imagine playing that. Um, but okay, bishop e6. Um, but white's clearly better now after knight takes e6 check, f takes e6, and knight d4. And um, so hitting the pawn, I play d5. I mean, try to save the pawn with tempo, I guess, but he came in anyways. Um, knight e6 check. Notice I don't think white should take the bishop here. That just helps me untangle. This bishop is completely locked in. And my king is really uncomfortable short on squares. So, um, yeah, I play king d7. Computer thinks this is the best move. Again, it's a tempo on the knight. And he played bishop c4, which I think ramps up the pressure a bit, um, develops a piece. My pieces are terrible. I, I can barely move my knight. I actually can't move it because if I come here, I think he just takes it. And I have so many weaknesses. Uh, my bishop can't move. My rook isn't doing anything. This rook can't move. And my king's really uncomfortable and unsafe. <laughs> so this is not a fun position at all. All right, so um, he... Um, oh, yeah, I go knight d5 here. So I am threatening to take the knight now. And he goes knight g5. He's threatening to hit the rook again. And this is actually a fork on the rook and the pawn. So every move that white makes is forcing. You know, every single one is a threat. He just played this really well. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I went e6 here. This is okay, but white's clearly better still. And now he jumps in. Rook g8, of course. And, and this is uncomfortable just because I'm still in line with the bishop, so i got to be careful. Um, and now really he could just take the pawn with check. I think that, <laughs> I was expecting that. It looks pretty good. Um, but he decided to trade the knight off first. I took back with the e-pawn. So this does fix my structure a little. And then he took with check. So, okay, I mean, I think white lost a little advantage there um, just from fixing my pawns. Computer agrees and says white's plus 0.9 better now. Although, I have to admit, I was feeling pretty hopeless here. Um, all right, so I go king c7. Why? I'm just giving my knight a square. I'm trying to entangle. He plays d4, very good move, solid, this knight's very strong. Um, okay, so I play um, bishop d6, bishop f4, knight d7. This offers a trade. Yeah, I'm, I know in my annotation, because I annotate all my games without a computer engine now, which is nice because you can see, um, you can especially identify the moments where you didn't know what to do or when you thought you were playing a bad move because you don't see anything better. And you can work to improve those moments um, rather than just jumping in with the computer engine right away. Um, and that, that um, I had um, three sessions with I am John Bartholomew and he's the one that recommended I do that. I have to say it's really helped me um, or at least I think it is, and it, I do feel like I get more out of my game analysis now due to that. All right, so I want to look at this move. Um, yeah, computer um, is giving other suggestions, like even h5 and g5. So tempo on the bishop, it looks like, g5. h5, I'm not sure what h5 is about. Gaining space on this on the queen side, I guess. So this move, um, it's not bad. 
but it's not most precise either. Because I'm offering to trade down into basically a pawn down endgame, which maybe I can hold, but not likely, you know? <laughs> then again, this knight's really strong. So, okay, in the game he took, I was happy to see that move. Yeah, that's wrong. He shouldn't take there. So he trades down into this. And I was pretty happy to see this. So, okay, now king d2. And he's ready to bring his rooks in to the open file. White's certainly better here since he has an extra pawn. This guy can probably win the day for him, but we'll see. Um, I bring my rook in. Oh, and he brings the other one in. So, this is actually interesting because, uh, again, psychology comes into play. I started playing quickly from this point. I was down on time quite a bit, and my opponent still had 15 minutes. And the psychology of that situation was I was frustrated because, um, yeah, and I don't think it's good to get emotional during a chess game at all. I don't think it helps. But I was kind of ticked off because my opponent was lower rated than me and playing all these really good moves really quickly. And I suspected he was using an engine, which based on computer analysis, he wasn't. He did not play the top computer moves every time. He just played some good chess. And so that goes to show you that probably that 1400 rating put me in a mindset that um, was not desired for my game and was and actually hurt the way I played um, from this point on. And what's the point of that? Don't trust the ratings. Um, for all I know, this person is a 1900 player. You know, um, just because someone has a rating online doesn't mean that's their true strength, and it doesn't mean they won't play better than their rating. So at the end of the day, you need to just play chess. So that's the psychology of that. The other um, piece I want to mention is that I thought I was just lost here. So I started playing very um, fast, frustrated, just saying, yeah, this is going to trade down into a lost end game, and I'll try to draw it, but I was not, I didn't have the right mindset, which was I, if he screws up even one little move, um, I can draw and maybe win. So I should be watching for tricks and watching for opportunities. And as you'll see, there's an opportunity that comes up. So um, yeah, that the psychology of this game um, was not so good for me. Okay. Yeah. And I really like this plan for white. I don't know if this is good, but I was just looking at this now. If you can ever do, or not this, I want the rook here. If you can ever do that, I think I'm just in a lot of trouble. So I shouldn't allow that. Yeah. And actually at this point in the game, I make a mistake. I played rookie four. Um, this is a natural looking move, but this just weakens my pawns. He takes and takes. Now I have an isolated pawn, so <laughs> totally the wrong move. Um, I think I did that because I didn't know what else to do, um, but I should let him trade. Like, if he takes, I get the file, and if he challenges me, his king goes back. So that's actually slightly better for me. So, um, yeah, the computer is suggesting just some pawn moves, which I don't totally understand, I guess, you know, get some space on the queen side. Probably, I like g5 because I said I don't like this move, so g5 stops it. It stops f4. All right, let's continue. I don't want this video to be too long. <laughs> okay, c4, rook f8. I don't think this is accurate either. He can just um, defend it. Peter likes c5, although I have to say I don't like c5. C5, what about this? D5. Yeah, I don't know. But that probably means that I am worse here, which, yeah, of course I'm worse. <laughs> so rook of fate, king e3. <coughs> Attacking my pawn. So now I have to move my rook again. <laughs> Notice my king is completely walled off. I can't come in any of these squares. 
and I can't really push because of d5. So um, it's difficult to play this position. All right, he comes in this way. Now um, he can step out of the way and threaten the pawn. All right, so now I stop that f4 move. He says, nope, I'm going to play f4. I played here. He uh, reinforces. Good move, I think. I play here. And now f4. And so what do you think about this move? It's actually a complete blunder and loses the game. <laughs> well, might lose the game. It. I'd say White's fighting for a draw after this move. So if you'd like to pause your video and um, see if you can find the winning continuation, please do so now. Yeah, so pretty simple tactic, really. You take on Passant, and it's check. And now White cannot take the pawn because we win the rook. So... Um, Instead of that, white has to play king f2. I thought I already had this in here. I'm sure I do. So f4 here, king f2. Yeah, and now the best move is to take the rook, force the king back more. And after g4, um, this is very, very desirable for black. Um, the king can never come to f5 at this point, because if he ever comes up, this pawn is running. So this structure is tying down this pawn. Now, I think there probably are tricks with this move. Um, but, you know, if we reinforce, I don't see how he ever does anything. So um, this is very desirable for black. So after g4... Um, he can come up to d2, and he probably should. But we take, take, and now notice these pawns are a little bit weaker. We're going to bring our king up. Now, like I said, this king can never come up. And here, I think we can just go, like, king f5. And how do we win this? A4. I think white's going to be in zigzag soon if they're not already. I really don't think they want to play H4 or H3. But computer says that's one of the best tries. And yeah, if they go king D3... What do we do here? Yeah, what about this? <laughs> I'm just following the computer line so we can see what happens. King d5 here. And yeah, so this is winning for black because I'm pretty sure we're just going to march over here and um, win. So what I would do in this situation is count um, to figure it out. So what do we need to win? We need um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to queen. And he needs one, two, three, wow, four, five. He needs a lot because this does not create a pass pawn. And if we come here and he tries to come, I think he's just too late. So this just loses, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it says king e2. I think the king's trying to come back. Yeah, he's just not in time, is he? Yeah, I mean, what does he do? So now he, he's distracted by this guy, and we're going to come back and get the other pawns. So this is completely won. <laughs> not feeling too good about my endgame skills right now. So F4 was a missed win, and unfortunately, um, I was a little down on time, but I just played the move A4 really quickly. A4, this move. And yeah, he can just take here now. And white is winning. Um, he just He's two pawns up, and um, I'll just show the rest of the game very quickly.
So this. Yeah, I just tried to play kind of tricky because I knew I was lost here. So this doesn't work at all. Now my king's really bad. <laughs> trying to get my king back over at this point, but those two pawns are just too much. So I actually think this is slightly a better situation than me, but still lost. <laughs> yeah, we trade and he can just queen now. So I resigned at this point, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this game. I thought it was instructive. Such a weird game. Like um, I've never seen this queen e2 idea before, but it was really interesting. And I think I really learned my lesson psychologically um, because um, my opponent played really well. And uh, I think um, I let that get to me, and um, it affected my play in a bad way. And I even missed that winning move in the end game. Um, so lots to learn. Um, so thanks for watching if you did, and have a great day. Bye.